Hello everyone, welcome to the course all about ASP.NET Core. My name is Rohit Raja and this course is hosted in uh, GitHub repository and also you can find the slides, the accompanying slides which is made using uh, the Reveal.js framework in the debugging.io website. You'll also find more details in the debugging.io website of all the other CDs of courses. Um, on .NET or ASP.NET as such and I also have this course hosted in the YouTube channel debugging.io so you can watch it from there also so all about this course is uh, is available in the github repo and you can download the source code the slides the videos everything from github so let's get started so in this video in this uh, series of uh, videos we're gonna talk about what is ASP.NET Core and how we can use ASP.NET Core to build web apps. Uh, ASP.NET Core all is built on top of .NET Core, so we'll also discuss the internals of ASP.NET Core and the .NET Core runtime. So, ASP.NET Core it is previously known as ASP.NET 5. So now, uh, as of now, the ASP.NET Core is an RC2. Uh, but ASP.NET Core is a new open source and cross-platform framework uh, built from ground up and it is targeted towards building modern web uh, cloud-based web applications uh, running on .NET Core. .NET Core is a subset of the .NET framework which will run on all OSs and it is open sourced and the source code is available in the GitHub repo. .NET Core and Core CLR. So this .NET Core runtime is a subset of the .NET framework, which is a full .NET framework which has been available for Windows for quite a long time, and which is thoroughly tested. And uh, a lot of companies are using the .NET framework, you know, ecosystem of apps, whether the Windows WPF apps or ASP.NET apps or MVC or console application it's all uh, you know tried and tested on the .NET run .NET framework so this .NET core is a subset of .NET framework uh, which has that many years of I would say legacy and instability attached to it ported to dot, uh, other OS's uh, Linux, OSX, or FreeBSD, which Linux um, all, all, all are in in-progress mode, uh, but it's uh, you can actually have available and start your development. As of now, it's an RC2. Okay, so the history of Microsoft Web Frameworks. Microsoft has released web frameworks um, all the way from 1996. So we had the classic ASP, it is called classic ASP, uh, active server pages and which was used to build a web application um, during that time and then 2002 Microsoft released on framework 1.1 and ASP.NET 1.1 and uh, which was actually uh, another another uh, architecture was followed called web forms uh, or I would say design pattern or uh, a different framework was used called Web Forms, ASP.NET Web Forms. But 2009, Microsoft also introduced ASP.NET MVC, which is the popular model view controller framework. And uh, the .NET framework was also updated. And ever since we had made many major versions of .NET framework and uh, new frameworks upgraded. But in 2006, Microsoft has released ASP.NET 4.6 and ASP.NET Core. The ASP.NET Core is is available or it can run on our OSs and completely open source unlike the previous versions of .NET Framework or .NET, uh, you know, ASP.NET Frameworks. So ASP.NET versions as of now with the new release we have ASP.NET 4.6 and ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET 4.6 can only run on the .NET Framework 4.6 and the uh, ASP.NET Core can run on uh, all versions of .NET Framework, but it it can if you choose other platforms, you have to target the .NET Core. So uh, ASP.NET 4.6 runs on 
external framework for purposes and this accompanies with other framework class libraries and the compilers and runtime components are same for the .NET Core and the ASP .NET you know the .NET Core and .NET Framework 4.6. So how does ASP.NET fit in? ASP.NET is a unified framework for MVC Web API SignalR. SignalR is not as part of the RC2 as of now, but it will be added. ASP.NET Core can run on .NET Framework, the full .NET Framework 4.6, and it can run on the .NET Core 5. So uh, the runtime, the stacks, libraries, everything related to .NET Core is open source. But if you target your application or if you port your application to ASP.NET Core, you can actually run it on any OS. And you know you can use various IDEs or development tools to develop your web application. And ASP.NET Core, why did a rewrite or why the, there is a new framework instead of just getting the ASP.NET ASP 4.6. So ASP.NET Core is built from ground up and it has 2000, it, has, it performs better or 2300 percentage better than the ASP.NET 4.6. As you can see in this graph, ASP.NET 4.6 is somewhere here. This is the request per second plotted and this benchmark is available in the GitHub repo. Uh, there's a separate repository called Benchmarks. You can actually see this there. So uh, if you compare the 4.6 framework, which is built from, you know, 2002, you know, the ASP.NET 1.1 to ASP.NET 4.6, it actually, uh, the max request per second reached was around 50,000, okay? If you see, it was around 50,000 mark. And uh, ASP.NET Core, actually, you know, it was somewhere started here, but uh, if you see, if you look closely, uh, if you look closely, it actually reached 1.1 million requests per second. That means it performs a more two or three times better than the ASP.NET 4.6. And if you see that, there's also a comparison for Node.js, which actually hits around 150k mark, 150k requests per second. Okay, so if you see here, the Node.js actually is, and it's actually, so it performs, this is actually on Windows, it's Node.js performance is measured, and you can see that it performs much, much better than the old version of ASP.NET 4.6. So ASP.NET 4.6 is built from ground up to be lightweight and highly performant, and you can find more details on this blog article which you know is the test currently done and you will also find these benchmarks in the github repo so spnet core is is built for modern web applications which needs to cater to serving millions of requests per second it can scale to that level and it's completely open source and it runs on all platform which we have already seen that it can run on Linux OS X or FreeBSD and it's actually um, Linux OS X FreeBSD in development but you can still you know it's in early stages of progress uh, but you can develop your application or run your application ASP.NET Core application in all these platforms eventually and it's com open source and community focused uh, it accepts completely pull request in the GitHub repo and there's a lot of contribution from the community in developing um, when it reaches the stage of RC2. And you can choose your editors. You have option of choosing a Visual Studio Community Edition or Visual Studio Code and or we, we have, you can actually use any text in editors to actually run or develop your ASP.NET application. And it is it completely supported and there are um, editors or extensions available for other, uh, like Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text and you can actually uh, completely develop your applications in that. And, the runtime or the community has many tools and add-ins to support that kind of development. And another important thing about ASP.NET Core is that everything is shipped as NuGet, including the runtime. So you can actually install the runtime using a NuGet command using a NuGet command and you can actually see that all this part is actually open source 
and available the, the core libraries the runtime s minute core every every part of the framework is shipped as NuGet. NuGet is a package manager for um, .NET ecosystem and you have um, tens of thousands of libraries already available and shipped so um, the NuGet is mainstream in SBNet core we will get to the details of this in later videos and we have a faster development cycle with ASP.NET Core. It has in-memory and dynamic compilation. You have the edit and run feature. So you edit your code and just refresh the browser. It will automatically be, you know, get the latest code and run it. So uh, these features are built into the, ASP, the .NET Core runtime. And ASP.NET uses these. And you, it's, it makes you a faster development cycle. Uh, write code, debug. Um, run debug this you know this cycle can be very fastly done and that's uh, improvement which SPNet core comes with and another important thing is that with SPNet core you can take the runtime with you uh, the seamless transition from on premises to cloud it has a very small footprint or in memory and the runtime as i said because it's nuget package the run runtime can be shipped with the application and it allows side by six side execution of the core so you can have three or four different applications running on different versions of .NET Core runtime and all references different version altogether without affecting each other. This was not really possible with the older version of .NET Frameworks because it's always installed machine wide. So these, these uh, problems were completely eliminated with Run by starting running side by side execution, and it also off offers the container support. And the, currently, the Docker image is already available for SBNet, and the Windows container also is, will be supported. And uh, it has, as I said, it has a very small footprint. Um, if you if you see, this is uh, uh, this is the runtime or the image I have taken or screenshot from. I, this is the simplest of the application which I run a console application, and you can see that it just loads a uh, 16 MB runtime to come run your application. And you have this is the you know this is my actual my .NET EXE, which is the core which I was running, and MS Core Lib and Core CLR is the two things which is basically needed to run the application as far as framework is concerned so that's all about 80 around 16 to, to you know less than 20 mp is the total runtime cost you have to run your web application other than with uh, the libraries which you're using so it's act that lightweight and it's built for high performance so in the next set of videos we will go through in more details of all these features and how to get started with all development of dotnet core and with and sb.net core Thank you for watching and please do uh, find these slides and the references in debugging.io website.